So I saw an interesting comment on a YouTube video the other day, and the person was saying, you know what? The TCG and the OCG should be linked together, be exactly the same. We should get the products at the same time. We have the same ban list, the same card pool, the same rulings, same everything. And even though that's just never going to happen, I thought it would make for an interesting discussion video because I think a lot of players don't realize what the implications of that really does mean. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that subscribe button. Did you like that? I know you did. So we can keep on climbing even further beyond the 1100 ladder. I really do appreciate all of the support, ladies and gentlemen. It just makes my heart very warm on this hot, basically, summer day in Florida. So um, I think it was one of m 40s videos where someone had commented saying, I wish that the OCG was the same as the TCG, get products at the same time and all that. And even though it would be cool to have the same, I guess, format as the OCG would, you know, with like the same card pool and things like that, you have to keep in mind that the OCG is such a different animal when it comes to how the game is played compared to the TCG. Now, I'm not saying I'm one of those deniers where it's like, oh, OCG you know, results don't mean anything in the TCG because they are still a good way to tell what is going to happen here in the TCG. You know, perfect example of recent time being tier element. Tier element was tier zero over in the OCG. And what happened here in the TCG once we got Magnificent Mavens? Hello, the deck's fucking tier zero. So there are things in the OCG that we can pull from and when we are constructing decks here in the TCG to see what it is that's going to happen here. You know, a friend of mine put it best when he said that OCG decks tend to be built more towards being control-based decks because of the fact that they have max C at like three in every single deck, whereas the TCG decks are more combo-based. And this is really a reason why a lot of people that I see online and even in IRL like OCG format better than TCG format because OCG, even though it can be combo to a degree, it's much more reserved solely because of fucking Max C. This is why I say that like, yeah, I kind of like Max C, but at the same time, I don't want to play in a format with Max C because that's just fucking toxic because literally every deck becomes three copies of Max C, one call by the grave, three cross out designator, and maybe the occasional sales ban in our case, because some decks, or rather some players I've noticed in the TCG like to play sales ban compared to the OCG, they don't really play sales ban. Um, and so because of all that, OCG formats uh, and decks are built much differently solely because of Max C just being such a devastating card. Um, I'm not going to get into why, you know, Max C should stay banned because I think that that's just a totally different topic for a different day. But what's interesting though is to consider how is it that the TCG could even conform to the OCG? And I mean, really, it all comes down to, and I know I sound like a broken record, but Max C. If Max C were to ever come back to one, two, or three here in the TCG, you may as well just make the OCG and the TCG be tied at the hip. And the reason why I said that it's never going to happen, at least for the foreseeable future, is especially for those of you who didn't play back in the day, I've been playing competitively for over 10 years, as I'm sure most of you know. When we were tied at the OCG, like just tied at the hip, where the OCG, I remember, who remembers the fucking website, Shriek OCG, or I think it was called Shriek TCG, but you could go on this website called Shriek, and it was a Yu-Gi-Oh! website, and it was basically the OG version of YGO organization. You could go on there at like fucking two o'clock in the morning when Japan drops the Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list, because the ban list for both the OCG and TCG were the same. So before Konami of the TCG even updated their website, it was already up on Shriek and you could see what the balance was going to be. This didn't change until Dragon Rulers in 2013 got a bunch of different hits compared to the OCG and just, you know, completely exploded things out of nowhere. The only other time that this happened where pre-Dragon Rulers that something was different on the TCG balance was like they brought Mind Crush from like band or one to three. That was the only change compared to OCG. Everything else was the same. The issue also with the TCG and OCG being tied to the hip back then was ruling nightmares because <clears throat> you may have something work differently in the TCG compared to OCG. You had to make sure that they all work the same. On top of that, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice tonight. On top of that, 
you had cards not being hit because they weren't an issue in a different region. So for example, Light Sworns. Light Sworns were a tier zero dominant deck for a very, very long time in the TCG. The problem with Light Sworn though, was that we had Charge of the Light Brigade in the TCG. The OCG did not get Charge of the Light Brigade at the same time we did. So Light Sworns were literally booty, booty, butt cheeks compared to everything else in that meta at the time, compared to here in the TCG where like it was basically fucking tier zero. And so Light Sworns didn't get hit. And this was back in the time when like, I think we had formats last like nine months long. So you went nine months with a tier zero format, basically tier zero because Light Sworn was just that good back then where it didn't get hit. So you had to deal with it even longer for like another six months, I think it was. Then when the OCG got charged to the Light Brigade, they then brought Light Swarm back down to like a very much a fair deck. And it pissed a lot of people off. You know, could you imagine if we went through three months long of tier element being tier zero, but because like, let's just say for example, tier element Kaleido Heart, or that's a bad example, tier element Kid Kalos, wasn't a card yet in the OCG. It was a TCG exclusive. So it didn't, the deck didn't get hit in Japan. And then it, that meant it couldn't get hit here because Japan was in charge of the ban list. Could you imagine the fuckery? Like this game would have died a long time ago if that was the case, Pim. Like fuck that. It was absolutely horrible. And I remember like, I didn't have the money back then as a kid to play, you know, thousand dollar decks like Teledad and Light Sworn. So we were dealing with this shit for months on end. On top of that, again, like with the rulings, I don't remember off the top of my head if this was the case with X Sabers or not. I could be wrong. Uh, but if I remember correctly, XX Saber Dark Soul was ruled differently in the OCG and TCG, and that caused a lot of issues because back in the day when X Sabers first came out, you could stack the Dark Soul searches. So like if you had one Dark Soul and you were able to dump it to the graveyard five times, you got five searches. That's not the case anymore. They changed the ruling, but that's how it worked back then. But then like, I think it worked differently in the OCG. So it was a whole big to do. On top of that, you also have SEGOC here in the TCG, where it, as in, in the OCG, you do not. Now, what is SEGOC? Same effects go on chain. Now, for those of you who keep up with competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, you'll know that this is literally just basically fucking chain blocking, right? You know, whenever you're watching the YCS streams and you see them laying out all their cards in the tier element mirror match and they're up to like chain link 15, that is mostly because of same effects go on chain. So when you're here in the TCG and you're, I'm just using tier element as an example because it's the most ridiculous example there is because the deck was just annoying as hell with the chain links. You know, if you dump like a Kelbeck, Aigido, and like several different tier element names off of like, I don't know, just some random dump, like Merrill Mills 30 or something, whatever, you would go Kelbeck chain link one, Aigido chain link two, Rhino Heart chain link three, Hoffenis chain link four. You would declare all your chains if you're the turn player. Now, let's say like you used an Aigido to make both players mill and it's the tier element mirror. Well, because you're the turn player, you declare all your chains first, then the opponent would declare all of their chains and you make the chain link from there. Whereas in the OCG, they do not have that. So if like, let's say an Aigido activates and resolves, both players mill five, okay, we're in a tier element mirror match. Activate Hoffenis, response. Yes, I'm going to activate my Hoffenis. Do you have a response? And you go back and forth. Now, this can be both good, but also bad, because in the OCG, literally the concept of chain blocking does not exist there, which means you cannot chain block an Ash Blossom in the OCG compared to the TCG. Also, cards like Crystal Conclave work differently. If it's set on the field, you can activate it after, like, say, a card like Rageki resolves. That's something I ran into it as an issue when I was playing Crystal Crystal Beast on EDO Pro because EDO Pro doesn't have that. But besides the point, that's just like a little ruling there that's different in the OCG compared to the TCG. So even then, sometimes simulators get it wrong, right? So the idea of trying to chain block an Ash so that you can get your search does not exist. You know, you look at Sword Soul, when they synchro off with Mo Yi into Chen Ying, they usually do Chen Ying, Chen Ling 1, and Mo Yi, Chen Ling 2, because they would rather have their Mo Yi draw get Ash than their Chen Ying get, ash, get ashed so that they can't get to the blackout. You know, like that's the normal standard play for Sword Soul. Whereas in the OCG, it's activate Chen Ying response, Chain Ash. Well, fuck, I guess I'm just drawing a card off my Mo Yi, and hopefully it's the blackout that I was gonna search. So, it can be argued that that's either a good or a bad thing. I personally like the idea of chain blocking because then cards like Ash 
don't feel as oppressive and just unfair that like if the opponent has it, you just don't get your search. Um, and on top of that too, again, cards like with Max C, you know, you've seen like Call by the Grave go from two to one, Cross Out, Desenair go from like three to two. I think it's even at one now. Like it, it's just such a totally different animal. And I would hate to not be able to have that ability to look forward to the future of the game and see what it is that's going to happen here so that we can prepare. You know, a lot of players will buy cards in advance before like, let's say Cyberstorm access drops because they know that a certain archetype is going to be good because we can see those trends in the OCG. Whereas we're finding out right when the OCG is finding out about shit that we're going to get. And then like, imagine what that would do to the market. Like we'd be seeing buyouts like every other week, it would seem. It would just be bananas. So... Guys, these are just my thoughts. I hope that the TCG and OCG stay separate. I mean, I remember when it first happened, I was like, this is terrible. But no, it's a fantastic thing. Also, keep Maxi fucking banned. That, that card is just awful. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video.